Let your conscience be your compass, and you will always choose wisely. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we talk about learning to be more mindfully aware by listening to your inner voice. Enjoy. There are going to be plenty of times in your life when you're not happy. There might be years. And so it's a shallow boat in a very rough ocean. It's, it's based upon a misconceptualization. Happiness is something that descends upon you. Everyone knows that. You know, it, 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 it comes upon you suddenly. And then you should be grateful for it because there's, there's plenty of suffering. And if you happen to be happy, well, wonderful. Enjoy it. Be grateful for it. And maybe try to meditate on the reasons that it manifested itself. Right? Because it, it can come as a mystery, you know. You, you don't necessarily know when you're going to be happy. Something surprising happens and delights you. And you can analyze that. You can think, well, I'm doing something right. I'm in the right place right now. I've done something right. Maybe I can hang on to that. Maybe I can learn from that. What you should be pursuing instead is, well, there's two things. It's, you should be pursuing who you could be. That'd be the first thing. It's like, because you're not who you could be, and you know it. You have guilt and shame and, and regret, and, and you berate yourself for your lack of discipline and your procrastination and all your bad habits. You know perfectly well that you're not who you could be. And God only knows who you could be. And so that's how you should be strive, that's what you should be s- striving for. And associated with that, you should be attempting to formulate some conception of the highest good that you can conceive of, that you can articulate. Because why not aim for that? It's like your life is short and and it's troublesome. And perhaps you need to do something worthwhile with it. And if so, then you should do the most worthwhile thing. And you should figure out what that is for you. And part of that's definitely going to be to develop your character as much as possible, to dispense with those parts of you that are unworthy. And then maybe, if you're fortunate, and you do that carefully, then happiness will descend upon you from time to time. And that's the best you've got. And then also perhaps during sorrowful times, or worse, evil times, the fact that you've strengthened your character and that you're aiming at the highest that you can conceptualize, that'll give you the moral fortitude to endure without becoming corrupted during those times. And to be someone who can be relied upon in a crisis. There's, there's, a, there's an aim. You know, one of the things I've told my audience is, the young guys take to this a lot. I said, you should be the strongest person at your father's funeral. Right? Well, that's something to aim for. It, it's a transition, a generational transition. And it means that, well, all the people around you are suffering because of their loss, they have someone to turn to who can illustrate by their behavior that the force of character is sufficient to move you beyond the catastrophe. And it, you need that. And that's a great thing to, that's a great thing to hypothesize as your aim. And happiness just evaporates as as irrelevant in light of that sort of conceptualization. And there's also the fact that, you know, if you deal with, if you're, if you've matured enough, let's say, to deal with the catastrophe of loss and death, that you can also be the rallying point for the remnants of your family and pull them together at a moment of crisis. And that's, that's a payoff to some degree for the loss. And I mean, I've seen this in families who've dealt with death properly. The remainder of the family pulls together, you know, they become, they become more integrated. And it's not complete compensation for their loss, but it's not nothing. And it certainly beats the alternative 
where everyone fractionates because everyone's too weak to cope with the catastrophe and, and everything dissolves. The mission is the improvement of your character, the constant improvement of your character. And I think a lot of that's done in dialogue with your conscience. It's like your conscience is always telling you. Socrates said this thousands of years ago. Your conscience is always telling you what you shouldn't be doing. And one of the things Socrates said was what discriminated him from the run-of-the-mill person and why perhaps we still know of him so many thousands of years later was that when his conscious conscience told him not to do something, he didn't do it. He stopped saying the things that he shouldn't have been saying and he stopped doing the things he shouldn't have been doing. And that's a start, you know. That, that's a discipline, I would say. That's the ability to follow a certain kind of intrinsic discipline. And, and maybe that's merely the cessation of evil. It, it, that's not exactly the same as the pursuit of positive good. Let's say you haven't got there yet, but that's a start. You, you clear away the obstacles from your vision by ceasing to engage in those activities you know to be wrong. And then the world starts to lay itself out in more pristine form. And then maybe you can start to apprehend what would be positively good instead of merely not wrong. That does it for today's episode of 7 Good Minutes. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on the platform you're listening on. If you have questions, you can ask those by going to 7goodminutes.com slash askclyde or get me on Twitter at Clyde Lee Dennis. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.